simplifying your IOLTA, IOLA attorney trust account with Paul Garibian, episode 159. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another amazing guest interview here on the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, Moshe Amsel, and today I have a special guest with me. Uh, and the reason why I think this is a special a special guest is actually there's a few of them. So first of all, um, I don't believe that I've ever had a guest on the show uh, that was from a financial institution. Um, and I think that when we have a show called Profit with Law and our focus is on firm profitability, uh, the cash conversation cash management, whether it's operationally or whether it's what you're doing for your clients and what you're responsible for uh, in managing your clients' funds is an important conversation for us to have. So I'm really excited for our guest today because we're going to we're gonna be doing a first-time event here as far as the type of uh, topic that we're talking about, and that's super exciting for me. Uh, the second reason is because uh, uh, they voted... Um, uh, with confidence in our brand and have chosen to be uh, and participate as a sponsor of our upcoming Law Firm Growth Summit. Now, if you're uh, just hearing about the Law Firm Growth Summit for the first time, you definitely want to check it out. Last year, Dece well, um, December of 2019, we hosted the Law Firm Growth Summit, a five-day virtual event, and uh, welcomed over 2,300 law firm owners to the event and people enjoyed every second of it. It was amazing. The feedback was amazing. People are still talking about it today. You do not want to miss this opportunity. Now, I know that there's a ton of events out there. I know that you have a lot of options as far as what you participate in and what you don't, but this is the only event that is going to be exclusively focused on you and your practice's growth and being able to get the life that you want, to be able to build the team that you want, to be able to bring in the, the revenue that you want and to be able to take home the profit that you want. Those things that, that drove you to start your firm, that's what's we're, what we're gonna help you in three days to be able to get on the path to doing that by participating in the Law Firm Growth Summit. Tickets are on sale right now. You want to go to lawfirmgrowthsummit.com, but you want to act fast because prices of tickets go up on Monday. Now, our guest today, Paul Garibian, is the president of Noda. Noda is a fintech backed by m and Bank. He has led SaaS and technology organizations to drive product development, grow market share, and increase NPS. I'm going to have to ask Paul what NPS is. Contributed to successful acquisitions for last uh, for his last three ventures. Um, I'm really excited to have Paul here. Paul and I uh, had a couple of conversations already. Uh, we hit it off. Um, he's a great guy. And I really think that what Noda is doing and the mission that they're on is essential for any law firm that is managing client funds. Now, whether you are required by your local bar to consider retainer funds, client funds, or whether you're running a business that um, that requires you to retain client funds. Maybe you're uh, doing landlord tenant issues, or maybe you're doing real estate transactions, or maybe you're doing um, uh, personal injury or malpractice uh, suits, and, and you, there's uh, large sums of money that belong to somebody else going through your hands. Uh, we all know we're at some something that scares the bejesus out of every single attorney who has to deal with it. Because if you're off by just a little bit um, in your math and in your accounting of those funds, your license could be on the line. And it's always been a sticking point with my clients. And I think that it's a conversation that's going to be worth having. So Paul, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. It's my absolute pleasure. Uh, Paul, I'd like to start off real easy. Um, my audience would love to know more about you. So if you can give us some of your backstory, who you are, how you got into 
to uh, fintech and how you ended up uh, serving um, law firms and the, and with with Noda specifically, that would give us some great color for our conversation today. Wonderful. So my my background is is, is pretty simple. I'm a technologist. You know, I've been in the enterprise uh, software space uh, since 2003, and then in fintech since 2008. Uh, you know, I worked with all the large and small financial institutions globally, uh, and M&T, uh, you know, happened to be a client. I did not work with them very closely, but I knew of them. And they're, you know, what makes, differentiates M&T and what attracted me to come and run the Nota Venture is their focus on the customer. So when I first approached about the opportunity, um, you know, it was a very clear pain point. You know, I come from a background of small business owners. So uh, building a platform with a distinct uh, pain point like trust account reconciliation, uh, you know, something that resonated with me personally, solving a problem for a customer with the customer. And when I first joined, um, you know, we were very clear about it. And now as we kind of interact with our users, we continue to learn more about the pain point. Yeah, absolutely. Now you're talking about the pain point. So let's jump right into that. What is the pain point um, that, that Noda is addressing? You know, one thing is very clear is that you've got, um, you know, half a million solo attorneys uh, nationwide. And we've talked with, you know, we've, we've interviewed and interacted with um, probably a couple of thousand at this point. One thing is clear, they're all reconciling trust accounting in a different way. They uh, have a, uh, a different tech stack, different process, and it's a very important subject for all of them. That's one thing that they have in common. And so one of the things that we're trying to do, we're trying to provide a platform and a process that helps them stay out of trouble and basically reduce the anxiety and give them the ability to do things more efficiently, give them back time and give them a back a peace of mind uh, to maintain their funds and not commingle them in a way that uh, keeps them out of trouble and uh, gives them the peace of mind. Yeah, no, I, as an accountant and as somebody who served um, uh, and serves law firms in that capacity, uh, you know, I have a unique perspective into uh, the management of, of trust accounting and, and what law firms are doing. Um, and what's interesting is, is that, you know, I want to poke this pain point even deeper and really bring it home. Um, many firms are managing their trust account balance in, in different places, right? So they have, maybe they're using QuickBooks for their accounting and they've got their bank balance going into QuickBooks but then they need to have that make sense. So they start to create all of these sub accounts that relate to specific clients and then specific matters. But at the same time, they're using a practice management software that needs to track it, what the outstanding balance of a client is so that they can know whether they need to stop work or not or things like that. So now they've got, they're, they're putting data in there as well as far as the trust account goes. And then on top of that, because they don't trust either of those two platforms or their own staff or themselves to be keeping them up to date the right way, they have a spreadsheet on top of that where they keep track of the various trust accounts. And what all of these different places to go to, all of these different entry points uh, creates is it creates confusion, it creates room for error, it creates um, uh, uh, extra work, um, and it creates a burden that's really um, it should be unnecessary. In today's day and age, we should have a simple solution for them, yet we really don't. Uh, I mean, my when we come in and we, and we provide professional bookkeeping services to a client, um, you know, we separate trust accounting out and, and we treat it as a separate engagement with them. You want us to manage your trust accounting? That's going to be a separate fee. That's going to be an add-on to our regular bookkeeping services because there is all of that extra work required because they're not, they're, they're, they don't have a simple solution for it. Um, and, you know, in a previous conversation that we had, you know, I encourage my clients to move their trust account to a separate QuickBooks file, because essentially it's not your funds, right? Uh, it shouldn't be on your balance sheet. It shouldn't be in your QuickBooks reports. Uh, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be there at all. Um, I also want to highlight what trust accounting requires as far as reconciliation, because uh, people who are listening to this may not even realize what they're supposed to be doing. And that's, you know, I think that part of the pain point is that there's, 
it's so vague because you're not trained as, as an accountant, right? You're not trained as a bookkeeper, you're trained as an attorney. So you understand that you have this requirement and you understand you need to be careful, but you not, don't, may not really understand what kind of uh, monthly documentation and, and checks and balances you really need to do in order to be compliant with what you need to do. Um, and there's this, this concept of three-way um, reconciliation. And it's, it's something that um, people have a really hard time wrapping their heads around. Um, and I want to ask you, do you want me to explain through your reconciliation or do you want to jump in and talk about it? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that you've got three-way account reconciliation can be fairly complex uh, for most people, you know, not for accountants. And, and the fact that you have that background, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, and, you know, what we're finding out, it's very difficult for people to have those, um, those funds to misline. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot, but would love to kind of get your perspective as well. Uh, basically, uh, the way we think about through the account reconciliation, you need to have three numbers uh, to equal one another, right? And I have to learn this myself uh, because I'm not an accountant and I'm not an attorney, but I am a technologist. So we have to figure out a way how to use tech to simplify this somewhat complex process. And so what most attorneys have is that they have a bank account. I mean, that's a must. So they most, you know, 60% of attorneys that we've surveyed have a QuickBooks uh, platform and, uh, you know, 40% and growing have a practice management software. So we believe you probably still, for most attorneys, uh, most solos, you probably need to have all three. And, you know, you certainly have to have an operating account and you have to have uh, you know, an IOLTA account. And so the numbers in your bank statement need to equal your numbers in your QuickBooks or, you know, the, uh, the, your, the, the ledger that your accountant maintains. And they also need to equal your uh, client matter balance, which is maintained either in a spreadsheet or in some kind of a, a ledger. But in most cases, it's starting to be the PMS, right? So we're trying to give the ability starting with the bank statement for you to reconcile, do the three-way reconciliation, starting with the source of truth, which is from a financial institution standpoint, and give you that sense of confidence that that's where you start and you work backwards from there. And currently um, that's something that, um, you know, our clients have struggled with, but once they've come on on NOTA, in addition to their existing tech stack, that sim simply basically give them that confidence because it's coming from the, uh, the bank statement. And the alternative currently is really printing those statements uh, as you probably experienced Moshe, trying to, uh, to, to make sense of this. And now it's done very digitally in a very simple user experience that you know, all our users embraced. How did I do? You did great, you did great. So um, it's interesting because technology has come to a point, like if any of my listeners are actually doing their own books and QuickBooks, you may, you may never do an end of month reconciliation to reconcile your QuickBooks to your bank statement. Um, and that would be a mistake. And it's something that we find very often when we take on a new client. Um, and the reason that that's happening is because technology has gotten to the point where there's a bank feed that's feeding transactions into QuickBooks. And you're, when you categorize it, you're also reconciling that transaction. So in essence, you already did a reconciliation on the fly. The problem with QuickBooks is that there is a possibility that the connection between you and the bank bank broke and or for whatever some other technical reason some of those transactions may not have come through or maybe you got duplicate transactions so the the end of month reconciliation is very simple because you already had those transactions all checked off but still you need to go through and compare the end of month statement to the, the balance in QuickBooks to make sure that there aren't those technical errors, right? So there's so usually in the past, in, in, the, in the bookkeeping and accounting world, reconciliation was done because everything was done manually, right? So you had a, a written checkbook, you had a, a, a ledger that you were keeping track of all the transactions and you needed to, to know what cleared, what didn't clear, what's outstanding and make sure that everything matches and, and there's you know there aren't any errors um, in your book. So you actually know what money you have and that to use and you're not overdrawing your account. Um, so that's, you know, that's where reconciliation came from, but now we're, we're in this point where it's almost unnecessary because technology has got, has gone so far. Um, when it comes to trust accounting, 
there's extra steps of reconciliation, which Paul just explained. And it's simply the, this, it's, it's within the trust account, within the single bank account, you have funds that belong to multiple clients. So essentially you need to create these separate pockets or envelopes of, of balances that you track that belong to the clients but there's no intuitive way to do that within your banking software. So you log into your bank, you just see what the balance is. You write a check, you just see that check come out. There's no way to know who it belongs to. So doing a reconciliation off the bank statement at the end of the month is only going to verify that the funds overall in the account are accurate, but it's not going to help you verify how much belongs to each of my clients, each of their matters. So the three-way reconciliation basically takes a three-pronged approach to make sure that first, our account balances for each of our clients are, are correct. So we need to reconcile that against our records for what transactions have transpired within their account. So we need to make sure that that matches, that what we think is the balance for that client matches what we're tracking, what our software says, or what our ledger says. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the overall balance of our trust account matches all of those sub accounts added together and that that match it. Then we need to check that against with outstanding, looking at outstanding checks and stuff like that that haven't cleared, check that against the bank statement. And that's our three-way reconciliation. So um, the big, the problem is obvious, right? Within your bank login, you you don't have the information you need. Within your bank statement, you don't have the information you need. You, you kind of need to take your practice management software, your QuickBooks, if you're using QuickBooks, or your spreadsheet, and your bank, and your bank account, and you need to take all three of those pieces of information. Uh, I'm sorry, if I said bank account first, I, I don't want to confuse you. Let me say the three again. Your bank account, bank statements, your uh, QuickBooks data, and your practice management management software, right? So, or, or your spreadsheet where, so you're looking at the three pieces of information coming in together and we need to reconcile. They all need to match. Everything needs to, the, the, all three of them have to be, have to arrive at the same balance. And if they don't, then we got to look into why and make sure that we're not, that there isn't an error, that there isn't something that's missing or something that wasn't recorded properly. Um, and that's, you know, that's what has to happen. So, you, it's clear and obvious that this is a fragmented process, that this is a tedious process, and this is a confusing process. And unless you're hiring outside help um, and they know what they're doing, which by the way, disclaimer, and I don't want to tout, toot our horn, but there's a lot of bookkeepers and accountants out there who are not doing this correctly. And they don't understand the process because they don't serve exclusively lawyers. So you, if, you, if you are working with somebody who's not exclusively serving lawyers, who hasn't got this down, if you're not getting a monthly three-way reconciliation report, then the company that is doing your books is doing something wrong, right? They're not doing a good job for you. Um, and the problem is, is that from a bookkeeping perspective, when we do that report, that is a manual process, even for us. We have to take those different pieces of information and, and create that report manually. There's no way to go into QuickBooks and say, hey, do a three-way reconciliation of an IALTA account for me. Or go into the practice management software and say, hey, do a three-way reconciliation of, uh, of our IALTA account for me. So um, there's got to be a better way. And when I, when I heard what, what, what Paul and Noda were doing, my, I was blown away by how simple they have solved it, how simply they have solved this problem. So Paul, tell me what is it that Noda does and how does it solve this issue? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really simple is that, like I said, uh, and, and like you, you know, explained much, much, eloquent, much more eloquently than I did, is that it's really about the numbers getting aligned in those three, three places. And one thing that's certain, right? You know, a lot of things can go wrong with the data. A lot of things can go wrong with PMS, but the source of truth never changes. You know, banks are highly regulated. And one of the questions you ask, you know, why did you do join NOTA? Is that there is a lot of advantages uh, by using, you know, highly regulated, highly maintained uh, source of truth of data, right? Data integrity, you know, I would call it. You know, banks uh, and their regulators spend a lot of time making sure that numbers are accurate. And, uh, you know, that's something that fintechs and, um, you know, just, you know, software providers, you know, have a hard time ensuring that kind of redundancy, that kind of uh, accuracy in data integrity. So 
you know, the statement, you know, hey, take it to the bank, you can certainly take it from the bank because that number comes from the bank. And it's much easier to figure out where the, you know, why the other numbers don't align. So when you start with the bank account, I mean, it's really that simple. And so what we do is that we give you a digital bank statement. We give you the ability to add notes to individual sub accounts, right? So, you know, our, our users, uh, uh, some of them call this, it's I owe the sub accounts in your pocket. You know, that's one of the taglines we might uh, embrace. Uh, and so we have the ability to give you that transparency to see those sub accounts and those transactions and, and uh, tag them to specific buy matters. And what that does, that provides you as the, as the uh, attorney, the ability to have that level of granularity and transparency uh, coming from the uh, source of truth, which is your bank account and the ability to make any corrections in QuickBooks or your PMS to make sure that you achieved a three-way account reconciliation. And all of this is done in a very simple way, in a, in a very simple user experience that uh, doesn't require you to, to be a CPA or a bookkeeper to be able to do this. This is the feedback, overwhelming feedback that we get from our users that the simplicity of Noda uh, is uh, one of the key reasons they love it and embrace it. Yeah, so I, I want to try to dive in a little bit more into describing what exactly Noda is doing. And, and I, I got a chance to get a demo of it, which is why I'm so excited about the platform. Because, um, you know, think of, of the banking login that, that you have. Um, you know, when you log into your bank, you get this dashboard. And this is, you know, this is my balance. And these are, these are my transactions. So what Noda does is it basically creates this alternative universe for you, right? So you could still log into your bank and get the regular look and feel that you log in. But when you log into Noda, um, you're getting uh, a different interface that has a much deeper level of, of, uh, of data. And the, the way I like to, uh, the way I like to describe it from, from what I saw is it's kind of like integrating QuickBooks into your banking login, into your online banking, right? So it, it's allowing you to go much deeper with the balance information that you're reporting so that it's actually tracking the balance per matter for you. It's actually, it's, it's actually allowing you to reconcile transactions on the fly, just like QuickBooks is doing, except remember that one thing that I said QuickBooks had a weakness on that you have to do an end of month reconciliation for? Um, in case some transactions did not come through because it's a bank feed. Well, this is not a bank feed, this is the bank, right? So the transactions are there. That one component that was missing is not even missing. So um, the beauty is, is that you don't have any holes that you, when you're reconciling on the fly, you're no longer needing to do an end of month reconciliation. Now you probably should do it for your own documentation. So you get to print out the report and put it in your file box. But at the end of the day, every time you log in, you should see that the balances match. They should, every time that you finish clearing all the transactions, you finish assigning them to the right, right matter and the, you know, the right, the, you know, where they were supposed to go, you should always see those balances match. So at any given time, when there's no pending transactions, those numbers should all match each other. And that's what I think is the beauty of, of Noda because it eliminates that extra spreadsheet. It eliminates you needing to do triple entry of all this information all over the place. And on top of it, it also allows you to simply log into your bank and know instantly how much money belongs to each of your clients. So now when somebody, when a client calls up and says, Hey, I need, uh, I need an update on my balance. It doesn't become a two and a half hour project to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes before you report the balance to them which is a pain point we didn't even talk about, right? It, and that's what's happening today with most attorneys. And, um, you know, this is, it's, it's mind blowing how simple and easy it is. So uh, with fancy schmancy software like this, it's gotta be pretty expensive, right? Well, actually not. And that's the beauty of it. So one thing I just wanna make clear is that Nora is uh, basically uh, a bank account, uh, an M&T IOTA bank account, plus the IOTA software all in one and at no additional charge. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, one of the questions that, you know, our, our viewers, viewers might be asking is that, well, wait a minute, I, I have QuickBooks, I have PMS, uh, where does Noda fit in? Well, 
Nora is basically integrated with your uh, uh, bank account and it comes at no additional charge. Um, and uh, basically you are able to just have a much better experience managing this aspect of your business. Uh, and, you know, it's not going to cost you anything. And, and that's the beauty of it. You know, we, uh, and question is, you know, what, how are you able to provide the service? What's the catch? Well, there is no catch because we're able to do this because ultimately we are a bank and, um, you know, we're able to, to provide the service at just no additional charge to our uh, valuable customer. That's amazing. Um, I, you know, whenever I hear that this is, you know, hey, this is just a value add for our clients. Um, and and an Alta account doesn't cost anything either, right? So basically, it's just a matter of saying, hey, I'm going to open an account at m and and automatically I get, um, uh, automatically I get this, this NOTA on top of it. And, and I'm assuming that there's training or you'll teach me how to use it, or it's so simple and easy that, um, you know, it, it, it's usable right out of the box, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, so there are a few benefits, you know, not only you get, um, you know, this value add service on top of the bank account, uh, which has a very simple uh, user experience, uh, like you've talked about, like the QuickBooks interface, uh, you know, can be difficult to use for some. Uh, and also like it takes, uh, you know, it takes a lot to get used to, you know, in this case, you know, most, uh, I would say probably 70% of our users are able to do this with limited training. Uh, there are some that require some, uh, some additional training and my, my team is, um, you know, fully knowledgeable and ready to, to help at no, you know, at no additional charge, which we are uh, very much interested in increasing adoption and helping our users embrace the system. Another thing that we're committed to is that we, uh, you know, listen to our users uh, very carefully and we take the feedback and incorporate that into the product. You know, one of the things that we, we hear very frequently is that, listen, we, I gave you this feedback a month ago and, uh, you know, I log in and I see the implemented features there. So it's very powerful because we believe that the users know, um, you know, user feedback ultimately is what drives our product roadmap. And I know even when we gave you the demo, you, you, gave, you had a few suggestions and we're in the process of implementing that as well. So, so that's the power of Noda. It's the simplicity and, you know, being very uh, relentlessly, I would say, surveying our users and incorporating that feedback into the, into the product. Absolutely. I love it. Um, now, uh, there, there's obviously some challenges that, that, we're, you know, that people would have in considering this. And, and I, wanted, I want to address those in this conversation. I don't want to leave an elephant in the room for people to walk away from this with. Um, and some of it, I'm going to preempt some of it with saying, hey, we understand you're a fintech and things happen, you know, they get rolled out, right? So it's possible that something's available now in one, one way, one form in, in one location that maybe it's not available the same way for other people. So I wanna cover uh, those things in this conversation as well uh, so that people understand where they, you know, where they sit uh, as far as their accessibility to your, your platform. Uh, but the first thing is, is bank accounts are one of the things that people just, you know, they get married to it. You know, like I have, my funds are at this bank. I've got a relationship with this bank. Um, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to move my account. It sounds like a big undertaking, a big pro project. Um, what, what is your, do, you know, does somebody need to move all of their accounts to M&T in order to do this? Does somebody need to move their IALTA account to do this? Or can they, and I don't even know, are we allowed to, are they allowed to have two IALTA accounts? Um, just give us some color into how somebody might consider tr trying the product or transitioning to the product in a way that's as painless as possible. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, 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 we've made it very simple. You know, we don't ask anyone to move their entire relationship. All we're asking for is for someone to try us out and open an IOTA account with MT Bank, which, you know, you get NOTA as part of that process. And uh, what most, uh, uh, most of our users do, and, you know, uh, they basically open an additional bank account. Some move right away because they, they see the value in a demo. Uh, but after seeing the demo of the product, which is, you know, uh, we, we encourage everyone to do before they kind of look into it. And our specialists would usually go through it in, in great detail and, and answer any questions and educate you on the process itself. Um, and uh, basically it's, it's, you know, you open an IOTA account, you test it out. And uh, I would say that every single user that we have eventually ends up, you know, opening that account. It doesn't require you closing that one over time. 
Uh, we expect our users to transition those funds into the new one as they kind of, you know, uh, uh, have new clients and open new cases, but majority of them kind of do it right away. It doesn't require opening a new uh, operating account, uh, but certainly, you know, I foresee as we continue to build value for our users and they see that we, you know, similar to Moshe, to you and your team, all we do at Nora is we, we work with attorneys. So, uh, you know, to my knowledge, we're the only bankers and technologists, you know, banking technologists out there that are focused on this particular segment. And we're not working with large law firms. We're focused on solo and small attorneys. And I think that's our secret sauce. And over time, I think that, you know, we will continue to uh, build the product. We're not done yet. Uh, and uh, as a result, you basically have a, a group of people uh, that as a solo, you wouldn't be able to afford uh, because, you know, technical talent is, is you know, hard to get uh, that are basically working for you to run this part of your business. I, I love that. Now, let's let's address the geographical footprint. Uh, it, I'm, I'm aware that m Bank is not in every single state in the U.S. Um, does that affect the accessibility of the of NODA um, to people anywhere in the U.S.? I mean, uh, let I, we'll stick this conversation just in the U.S. I know I have international listeners, and I know that uh, you know this entire conversation for our international listeners, um, you know, might be might be one that's that's uh, unnecessary or unrelated because I, I don't know, depending on your country, how uh, how this is addressed. But here in the U.S., pretty much every one of the states has similar rules as it comes to when it comes to IOLTA. So we're addressing everybody in the U.S. Um, but I know that m and Bank is, what's your, what's your footprint, 11 or 12 states? So, um, you know, what about the rest of, of, of the United States? You know, do you, are, are they able to open um, an IALTA account? And then we, then we got to start thinking about, okay, what if I get a check? How do I get that deposited? Um, you know, and things like that. Because I'm sure that some of our listeners are like, yeah, I, this is great, but I never heard of m and Bank. And probably because you're just in a, a geographical area where they don't, where, where they don't exist. You know, I happen to have M&T banks all around me where I am in the New York area. Um, but I'm sure that if I was out in, in the Midwest, I wouldn't find one. Yeah. So I actually, you know, great question. So M&T, uh, we, we offer this service currently in 10 states, uh, predominantly in Northeast uh, plus uh, the state of Florida. Um, but, um, you know, this is just for now. I mean, our, our plan is hopefully to roll this out nationally. Because at this point, we basically have the ability, even when we don't have bank uh, branch proximity uh, to our users, uh, like, for example, in Florida, um, you know, we have branches in, in South Florida, but we don't have uh, branches in North Florida. So we have, you know, but we have users in North Florida. So we've uh, proven the hypothesis that we're able to, to serve users regardless of proximity to, to branches. But for now, it's limited to, uh, you know, those 10 states. Uh, but, you know, we're going to be uh, thinking about in 2021, the ability to roll this out nationally. Awesome. So what are those 10 states? So if, if listeners are interested in, in learning more about it and it's relevant to them, uh, let's go through and list those 10 states. And what we'll do is, folks, is in the show notes, when we give a, a link to, uh, to, be, to book a, follow, you know, a call with NOTA to, to get a, um, uh, a demo of the product, uh, in that, um, in the show notes, we'll list these states out so you don't have to remember it. But when we list them off, you'll obviously be able to recognize whether your state is included. Um, but before, even before we list those states, is, is there a roadmap for NODA to be something that's able to run on top of other bank accounts? Is, is that something that, that, that uh, you're thinking of doing as, as the growth plan? Um, or is it really going to remain an M&T product and you're just simply going to grow the m and footprint for IOLTA uh, to be nationwide, or is it some combination of the two? So, so great question. I mean, at this point, we're, um, you know, we're still figuring that out, um, you know, but for now, I think it will continue to be, um, you know, require you to have an IOLTA account with m and Bank, uh, which by the way, it's fully digital and seamless. And we just, you know, encourage you to speak with, um, you know, with my team, uh, you know, it requires about a 15 minute conversation to explain to you the value to show you the product. And, and so far, uh, you know, we've had really great response from folks that have seen it, they've seen the value. And, um, you know, if it's limited to you only in those 10 states, and, you know, if you decide to uh, kind of learn more about this, we're happy to hear from you as well. And, you know, there are some int intricate requirements uh, by those states, um, you know, by all states, I think we'll find out 
So we're trying to kind of uh, build around that as well and provide that value. Um, but the 10 states that you mentioned that we're in, it's basically New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Connecticut, Virginia, DC, and Florida. Um, and so, um, you know, but we, we, we have to figure this out next year, whether, you know, it uh, continues to be M&T or what those options are. We're uh, actively trying to, to figure that out. But for now, it's M&T IOTA account is a must. Awesome. And I, I appreciate your transparency. I think our users appreciate it. Um, do you have a, a, a wait list for people who are out of state that are interested in your product? Have you started to make that available so that when you want to test it in, in another state, you have people to go to and say, hey, we're, we're coming? Uh, you know, we, we're starting to, I would love to build it. Uh, to be honest with you, that's uh, not something that has been a focus, but we'd love to hear from those folks and put them on a waiting list. So please reach out to us. It's, you know, trustnota.com and you'll have the link in this, in this podcast uh, and, you know, have a conversation at the, at the minimum. I think you'll, you'll learn something about, you know, some best practices about the trust account reconciliation, even if, you know, we're currently not offering that in your, in your particular state. Awesome. Um, and, and I'm going to circle back and ask you to, to share how somebody would go ahead and book a demo with you at the end of the episode. But I do have some more questions. Um, so before before we run to that, um, you've you've onboarded a number of clients, a number of, of law firms into this product already. What are some of the, the growing pains or the challenges that you've seen um, attorneys have as they go through this process? Uh, you know, one thing that's uh, that's a challenge is trying to reconcile the, the the legacy transactions, right? And in some cases, you know, when we work with attorneys that have you know several hundred or several thousand, uh, you know, is the ability to kind of upload them uh, into Noda. So we've built a feature recently to overcome that challenge: is the ability to have a, a mass import of those client matters into Noda instead of trying to enter them uh, manually. So that was one of the challenges, and you know, like I, I sincerely mean this, you know, we listen to our users and we try to improve the product. So that was one of the features that we just implemented last week. Um, but another thing is also just trying to understand, okay, so what happened, uh, you know, some time ago, several years ago, because, you know, people don't remember uh, what some of those were. And, you know, our teams, you know, try to overcome that. But I think, the, uh, you know, kind of looking in those legacy transactions becomes, becomes a challenge. But some of the bookkeepers that the, you know the attorneys have tried to help with that process. Uh, so we're trying actively trying to figure out, you know, is there a more seamless way to do that? But I would say onboarding part is is very simple. Um, you know, a client matter export, like I already talked about, will overcame that challenge. But the number one issue I think is uh, looking at some transactions, you know, uh, way in 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 the past that you know uh, some people don't have. Um, a good recollection on. Now, why, why are we importing legacy transactions? Is this because the funds are still sitting in the account? Is, is that what we're referring to? Where they, they're holding client funds that they've been holding for many years? Uh, well, the ability to, to have that reconciliation report, you know, and have that, you know, saving that reconciliation file uh, for, you know, any kind of audit or, you know, just their own records. So it's important to have things reconciled, but we're finding out that, you know, a lot of attorneys, uh, you know, kind of dodged the bullet and, and, you know, didn't really realize that, you know, there is a problem here with, uh, with three-way account reconciliation. So we try to go backwards and help them and, and make sure that not only the future looking view is, is in good standing, but also try to help them with the, with the past transactions, which is, you know, uh, that much harder to do, uh, but certainly we're, you know, willing to work with them and, and, and help them and, you know, try to, to figure that out and really, that's one of the things is that instead of you trying to do this on your own, now you have a team of uh, 20 and growing that are leaving, breeding and thinking about IOTA accounting and, uh, you know, trying to do this in, a, in an automated way uh, to help you, uh, you know, have that peace of mind uh, when it comes to this uh, topic. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you're that you're trying to help them with 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 fixing the past. Um, you know, when we when we take on a new client on, on the accounting side, um, we generally, I mean, unless the client needs us to, we generally say, okay, where, where are we starting from? What's our starting point? Um, and usually it will go back to the beginning of the current open tax year. So if 
they have, if they've filed their taxes already for 2019, we only care about January 1st and beyond as far as the work that we're doing. Um, and, and, it, and it's usually not a cost effective thing for them to go back and look back and try to fix the past. Um, and uh, what we do is, is, is we basically look at all the opening balances. And if an open, opening balance is off, then we have to do a journal entry to, to correct it um, you know, and, and apply that somewhere and, and, you know, in the previous year so that this year is clean and we can make sure that at least the current set of books is, is, is clean and accurate. Um, now, if they want to figure out why those balances were off and they want to go on a hunting expedition, then they can do that. Um, so I'm wondering if when you're working with somebody who wants to bring in legacy transactions, is it because their balances don't match when they're starting? Like they're trying, you know, they, they're, they're like, here's, you know, here's our IELTA account, but we can't figure out what, who the funds belong to. And, and it happens and there's a lot of diminishing returns in what you, you know, so that's certainly our playbook as well, you know, the, the, the forward looking, and it's a nice way to do that when you open a new account, right? Cause it's a fresh start and then you're just forward looking. Uh, but, you know, you asked about what the biggest challenge is. So that piece is, is straightforward and you've got, you also asked about what net, you know, NPS stands for, and that's basically a net promoter score. Mm -hmm. uh, which basically every user of ours, you know, becomes a promoter for Noda. And we've seen that, that basically that forward looking view. So that part is, and I'm probably taking it for granted, is that, you know, that piece going forward is very clear, very clean. And that gives you the peace of mind. But we want to go above and beyond for our users and try to help them with the legacy stuff as well, uh, as much as we can. But that remains a challenge. I'm hopeful that at some point, perhaps we'll, we'll find a way to tackle it with them, help solve that problem with them. But certainly uh, the one thing that's certain is the ability to do a fresh start, a cutoff, and then you basically have everything working so going forward. In a way that's uh, not as time consuming and uh, much more uh, simpler and easier for them to maintain uh, instead of the kind of the alternative. Got it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Now, uh, what, are there any other challenges that, that are coming up that you're either addressing or have already addressed that, you know, that uh, people might be thinking about, hey, what about this? What about that? Like, you've already gone through this or you're going through it. Um, curious to know what, what else um, besides for the legacy transactions has been an issue. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of things that we've, in, uh, features we've implemented, we recently uh, uh, launched our Quickbus in integration. We heard from our users that that's important. So we got that done and uh, continuing to build on that, that muscle and that the integration. So we're currently integrated with QuickBooks. Uh, we uh, also finished our low pay integration. That's another thing with invoicing and payment processing. Uh, so we got that done. And uh, one of the things that our users are starting to ask for is practice management uh, software integrations. So that's the next thing we're going to uh, try to figure out. The challenge there is, you know, low pay and, um, you know, QuickBooks are kind of the obvious choices when it comes to it. Uh, but with uh, practice management solutions, it's much more fragmented, quite a few options out there. So I think it's figuring out a way how to design that properly, to do it in a way that's uh, helpful to our users. But that's the next thing we're trying to, uh, to figure out. Uh, and, um, you know, this year, the new feature that we are committed to launching is actually ability to do check printing. Uh, you know, so instead of, uh, you know, that's something that we're currently uh, working on to give the ability for our users to print checks uh, from Noda uh, in instead of trying to log in into, um, you know, some other system. Right. And, and, and uh, you know, to be clear, check printing would normally be done from within QuickBooks. So the QuickBooks integration kind of solves that. Um, but for somebody who's trying to get their IOLTA account away from QuickBooks and not even involve their accounting software, I can definitely see the check printing being a key issue. Um, and I know that you have a number of law firms that are not using QuickBooks at all, um, and a number of them are not using practice management software at all. So if this is going to be an all-in-one solution, uh, definitely check printing would be something that I think would be important. Um, obviously, you can always write checks by hand, but you know that's prone for, prone for error and and maybe even lacks a little bit of professionalism if you want to if you want to look into it deep enough. Um, but the nice thing about IOLTA is that you're not going to have cash transactions. So that helps you with that geographic footprint, being able to expand nationally. I, don't know, I, have, not, I have no idea how banking licenses work and all that. But assuming that you're allowed to, um, you know, it, it can be really easy because somebody is just needs to be able to write checks and deposit checks. And if you can figure those two things out, you, they, you know, this can happen anywhere. Um, so I really, 
Uh, I really like that. Now, uh, what about if their operating account is at a different bank um, than the IOLTA account? So typically they would transfer money from one to the other in order to you know, get paid from retainer funds that are in, uh, in IOLTA that need to go to their operating. Um, have you seen any issue with people being having an issue with the with the time frame involved in moving those funds, whether they're moving it electronically to an external account or whether they're writing them writing a check to themselves and depositing it? It's probably a longer process than if it's in the, at the same bank. Has that been an issue? Uh, it, it hasn't been a, a, an issue per se. You know, we, we have the ability uh, to to do you know real time payments. Uh, that's currently, you know, not in place, but, you know, we, we haven't had uh, that being as one of the issues. Like I said, we listen to our users very carefully. Uh, and, um, you know, at this point, we have uh, close to 350 users on a platform. Uh, so, you know, the priorities on the roadmap is based on the user feedback. And right now that hasn't been an issue, but real-time payments, that's something that we can offer uh, in the near future if, if the requests from our users uh, surface. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and, and lastly, so I've asked you about challenges and I've asked you about problems and, and all of those come from places of doubt and fear and negativity. And I want to, I want to switch to, to positive. Um, what are some of the, the feed, what's some of the feedback you're getting from your users that, that they're, you know, that, that their life has changed, that this is, you know, this is, is totally, um, you know, uh, done something for them that they, that they've always needed and wanted. Um, are they sharing these stories with you? And, and maybe you have one or two examples where somebody, you know, actually shared what their, what, what the, what the end result was for them, not just to simplify their IOLTA, but what did it make possible for them in their lives and in their practice? Yeah. I mean, and this is, this is a great question because we just had our uh, monthly user advisory council meeting. And it's basically a, uh, a session where we meet with our users and kind of get their feedback on our thinking, on a product roadmap, the good, the bad, all of that. And, um, you know, what was wonderful is that we had one of our user advisory council members, uh, you know, a practicing attorney of 20 years. Um, you know, she's a solo uh, based in, in, in Baltimore, uh, Maryland. And um, she got, uh, you know, called to a grievance committee. And uh, uh, basically, it was really simple. You know, she uh, printed her uh, uh, trust account reconciliation report and NOTA, sent that to them. And, uh, and basically, it was a very simple process. You know, they basically gave her the thumbs up and the process was pretty much done. And one thing we heard from that particular attorney is that saying, before I got to use NOTA, uh, I think we onboarded her uh, four months ago, or three months ago, uh, you know, I was basically dodging the bullet. So hearing that, you know, is really what gets me pumped and, and, and uh, you know, knowing that we provide that peace of mind uh, to our, uh, our users. Uh, so, so that's one element of it. And another one was, um, you know, we have another attorney in upstate New York and uh, forgive me, I don't remember uh, where exactly. Uh, and uh, basically he has his wife uh, maintain uh, the IOLTA account given the, you know, all the intricacies of kind of doing that. And, um, you know, one thing that she, she kind of told us, you know, on average, I save two to three hours a week, uh, you know, managing the IOTA account by using NOTA. And that gives me the peace of mind, the time to spend more time with my family instead of trying to scratch my head. And there was an example she used. She said there was a, an $18 difference in her, uh, you know, in, a, you know, in unreconciled funds. And basically, it was really diminishing returns trying to go do that. So she just sent that money to the state uh, to kind of get rid of that headache. Uh, but, you know, now doing it with NOTA, uh, with the process that we provide to our users, you know, it just saves her time and, you know, just uh, and by saving time, she can go and spend time with her family. And I thought that was that was pretty powerful. Yeah, I love that. And, and that's, you know, that's what I was looking for, because intuitively, I understand and I know that using this is either going to allow you to do something that you would never able to do before, which is to actually have your account reconciled properly, or it's going to give you a ton of time back because this has been, this is, this has been a huge time suck for attorneys who are maintaining a trust account um, to, to stay on top of it and, and to make sure that it's, you know, that it's uh, um, you know, that, that everything matches up. Um, I, I mean, I, I know from, from my own client experiences that this has been a very sore subject, you know, when, when they, 
when, when they engage us initially, they want to, they want to make sure that we know what we're doing, that we're going to be able to give them the peace of mind with, with their IELTA account. Uh, but my bookkeepers are doing a, a lot of work. I mean, I know what kind of manpower goes into managing that IELTA account, uh, for a busy firm. And, um, you know, this, if, if our clients are, are on, uh, you know, the Nota, the Nota platform, that would, that would super simplify the work for our bookkeepers. So, um, you know, this is definitely something that we're going to look into, you know, internally to try to move some of our clients over, uh, to M and T and, uh, you know, I, I encourage anybody who's in the footprint right now that can have access to this to give it a try. Like what, what's the big deal, you know, like open an account, move one matter, you know, take one new matter that you, that you engage with and just put those funds there and, you know, and start to use it and see how that works for you and see how easy it is, see how simple it is, you know, maybe take two matters so you can actually see how it summarizes the different <laughs> matters. Uh, you know, you, you, it'll be hard to see when there's only one. Um, you know, but but definitely, you know, take it for a whirl. And my guess is, is that after one month of using it, you're probably going to be sold and you'll probably be like, OK, we're moving the rest over. So um, this is great. I, I, I love the product. I love the, uh, the I, I love what you're doing. Um, and I love that you're addressing something that has just been it's kind of been a thorn in everybody's side, but nobody's addressed it. You know, like the, there, there hasn't been a good solution proposed from anybody. Um, you know, and one thing that uh, is a huge mistake stake, I believe, from an accounting perspective is maintaining the IOLTA account within your QuickBooks. Um, and, you know, and I want to encourage everyone who's listening to, to really look at this and think about it because the funds in the IOLTA account, they're not yours, right? And what, when you maintain it within your QuickBooks and you run your balance sheet, the cash shows up as an asset. And then the, the money owed to the clients or the money that belongs to them shows up as a liability. And the reality is, is that, that uh, if you look at the underlying uh, relationship, that's not, not what's happening. They're not, they're not giving you an asset that belongs to you, and then you have a liability to pay them, right? Um, you're simply holding it in trust for them. So the trust account, if you're not in the NOTA footprint, you should really think about creating a separate QuickBooks login, separate QuickBooks account, not necessarily login. You can log in and access multiple companies, but create a separate company in QuickBooks for your IELTA account simply to keep it separate and keep it simple. The biggest human error issue within QuickBooks that we see with IOLTA is treating movement between the operating and IOLTA as a transfer, as opposed to a withdrawal and a deposit. Um, and that's huge. And, and it's, you know, uh, um, I can't stress enough how, how uh, terrible it is to make that mistake um, because it causes all kinds of issues when you're trying to do your three-way reconciliation. So um, the easiest fix for that is to make it a separate file where you just can't transfer, you can't use the transfer function in QuickBooks, um, you know, but Nota solves all that. And, you know, but there's a lot of listeners here who are not in the 10 states we listed. And I want to make sure that that I'm at least giving a nugget for you as well. Now, Paul, you may not know the answer to this, but it's something that I've been questioning. What's the difference between IOLTA with a T in it and IOLA without a T in it? Or is it just a state specific thing? Um, yeah. You know, why? And, and from a marketing perspective, how do, which one do we use? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, uh, only New York State uh, has IOLA. Uh, but uh, I believe uh, the remaining states uh, use the IOLTA. And so that's my, that's my understanding. Uh, you know, this, we, we get this question, but that's uh, kind of what I've learned uh, most recently. Got it. Got it. Paul, this has been uh, absolute, absolutely a, a fun conversation to have. It's been very interesting to dive into this. Um, you, you have the ability to do demos um, for somebody who's interested in this. Uh, how do they go about and book that? Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, so it's trustnota.com, uh, schedule a demo. And, um, you know, it's basically takes, you know, anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes, but we, we find out that this is so interesting that most attorneys kind of want to keep talking and learning more uh, because we're here to educate and also, you know, explain the solution. So it's very simple. You know, you pick a time, uh, there is a calendar available with, uh, with my team and, um, you know, have a conversation. You know, there is no, like I said, it's not, it's not a sales call. It's uh, more, you know, educating you and we're seeing an overwhelming response after people speak with my team, they realize how knowledgeable we are and how committed we are for uh, solving this problem for them. So trustnota.com, book a demo, very simple. Awesome. And uh, Paul would love to know that you came through this podcast interview. So when you're talking to the sales team, let them know 
that you heard Paul on the Profit With Law podcast. Um, and probably you'll stick to the 15 minutes because all your questions would have already been answered listening to this episode. <laughs> uh, but I do want to share one thing with, with our listeners, and that is if, if this topic intrigued you and you want to go into more detail and, and learn more, um, Paul and I are going to be doing a workshop together. And that the time that we're recording this, we haven't set a date um, but we are going to be going through all of the uh, important things that you need to know when it comes to uh, when it comes to your your uh, Iola Iolta account. Um, and I'm actually I'm lo I'm looking to pull up the email correspondence that we had back and forth, Paul, on the uh, what we're going to cover because I want to go through those those bullets here. And I don't know. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up real quick in in our um, email conversation. I don't, I don't see it coming up right off the bat. So, but folks, I'm going to, uh, in the, um, uh, maybe in the intro or the outro of this episode that I pack on, uh, before we release it live, I'm going to share with you, uh, how to, how to register for that. As a matter of fact, I'll give you the registration link. Now, uh, it's going to be profitwithlaw.com forward slash Iolta, um, and I will also make Iola work. So whichever one is yours, Iolta or Iola, um, uh, don't capitalize it because um, the forward after the forward slash is um, is uh, uh, case specific. Um, just you know, just put in profitwithlaw.com forward slash Iola or forward slash Iolta, either one. It'll take you to a registration page. Register for the workshop. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it'll be, um, you know, 60 minutes or less. We'll take you through, uh, and talk about all the key things that you need to know, uh, things you might've not, might not have thought about, um, uh, show you some screenshots of the product and really, uh, you know, uh, uh, help help you get a deeper understanding of this topic and 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 what we're talking about here. So I look forward to hopefully welcoming some of you there. But uh, if you don't think you need you need it, and you can go straight to uh, having a conversation with Paul and his team. Go to trustnoda.com, uh, click the schedule a call link, and uh, Paul, um, it's been absolutely a pleasure having you here. Uh, great conversation, and I look forward to what we can do together. Awesome. Thank you for having me. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Um, another amazing interview. Uh, you know the spiel. You know what I'm going to say. Uh, if you haven't left a rating and review for our podcast yet, um, how would you feel if none of your clients left a rating and review for, you, review for you on Google or something like that when you're asking for it? So uh, if you're getting value out of this show, it'll only take like literally two minutes of your time. Just go in your podcast player, click the write a review button, and just give us a star rating and write a little something about the show. Uh, people come here, you know, they're, they're searching for something that's going to change their life. And they want to find content that's going to help them. And when they look at a show, they, they have to decide, hey, do I want to commit to listening to 30 or 60 minutes of this? And they're going to look at those ratings and reviews. So the more that we have, um, obviously, it would be nice to have five stars all the time. But I am not going to ask you to, you know, to re you rate it wherever you feel you feel. But I think the, the more quantity of reviews that we have, the easier it's going to be for people to make the decision to jump in and take a listen and hear what we have. And we have amazing interviews like the one we just did. So, uh, and if this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you back. Uh, and you'll be notified every time that we release a new episode. We do that twice a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. And I'm really looking forward to our next episode uh, upcoming on Tuesday. Take care. Have a great day. That's it for this week's episode of Profit With Law. If you have enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with at least one person. Imagine how many lives we can change if we each shared this episode. Another way to share the episode is on social media. We appreciate your support and look forward to you joining us again next week.